Well, hello. Welcome. I don't know how long we're going to have that. People just live in their lives. What can what can we do? It's like it's right outside my window, but it's not. But anyway. So today. I'm sure you can hear me. Relax yourself, girl. Alright. Okay, so I have here Charlie Bigham's Paneer Tikka Masala. I have smokers, of course, and some garlic. None. Right in here is some pillow rice with uh, paneer, which I love, and I think there's potato in there, which I'm not too keen about actually, but um, let's see, I might enjoy that. Um, I don't buy Indian takeaway normally because I'm funny with meat uh, from takeout. But when I do get Indian takeaway, it's always the paneer because it's safe. It's so good. I love it. Paneer is cheese for those of you that don't know what that is. And I, this is a piece right here. Get a bit of rice with that on there. So this is Charlie Bigham. I've had a couple of the, her things before. Um, I've never seen paneer tikka masala anywhere before, uh, apart from restaurants. So. Mm. Oh, pen there. I love it so much. Nice kick to it. This is a delicious sauce. All right, this is potato. I would rather just add more paneer than potato, but you know. How is everyone? I hope you're good. I'm doing all right. Oh, that sauce is wonderful. Hmm. More paneer, please, Charlie Bingham. From the Indian restaurant, you're spoilt when you get paneer. It's just tons of paneer in heaven. Flavour-wise, she's done a very good job. With the sauce. I had to cook all this. I still still two more of those. They're going out of date. So I probably won't be able to eat it all. Right now I might be able to eat the rest of those later. <clears throat> but they're all here because they've got to be eaten. I threw out a bunch of food today which I'm really annoyed about. Anyway, the less said about that, the better. Hmm. That's what Pneer looks like inside.
So if you're here for ASMR, I'm sorry. Obviously, you know there's nothing I can do about other people living their lives. And it wasn't happening when I cooked this or decided to eat it. Literally, as I sat down, I could hear the gardener. Remembered wipes. Looking forward to this. A bit hot, hot to pick up. So, occasionally I'm going to talk about crime cases. It seems that a lot of people like it in mukbang videos, and I love true crime. Most people like true crime. Half of you said uh, in the poll that I sent that you would just prefer to keep my videos as is. You know, but there's a good enough percentage um, that wants crime stories or some sort of theme. So, maybe once a month, I'll tell a story that's interesting. True story. Criminal. And if you like me telling these stories, you just got to let me know. And maybe after a couple of videos, maybe I'll send out another poll and see if you enjoy but you can also let me let me know down in the comments too right so picture this it's 1828 the year 1828 edinburgh scotland there was a major breakthrough with anatomical science right and edinburgh scotland uh, was the leading centre for it in Europe. So, more and more medical schools were opening up in Ed Edinburgh. However, the um, 1752 Murder Act only allowed bodies of dead prisoners to be medically researched so executed prisoners orphans foundlings which are abandoned children and suicide victims could all be used for medical science it just wasn't enough they needed much more bodies This gave birth to, which I'm sure a lot of you already know, the resurrection movement, otherwise known as body snatchers. Well, some physicians and uh, students and lecturers and stuff would pay people to rob fresh graves. But it was getting harder and harder to do that. All the graveyards around surrounding any medical school or anywhere near any medical schools, people um, erected mort safes and mort houses which are complex contraptions made of heavy iron plates and rods and things like that to stop people and that's when repositories and vaults and things like that came about to store bodies of loved ones just because there was the risk of being stolen well in so this was in 1828 in uh, 1810 there had been a petition an ongoing petition to change the law because of what was happening with the body snatching It was repeatedly denied. 
So, I guess they thought it was okay that um, Mort Safe's iron contraption protecting the bodies was enough. And it was pretty good because um, 1828, people were getting desperate. Physicians were getting desperate. They needed cadavers. Like I said, more and more schools, medical schools, were opening up in Edinburgh. Well, two men called William Burke and William Hare. So this story is actually called The Burke and Hare Murders. They were both res resurrectionists, right? They would get seven pounds per body delivered to a medical school. Well, in particular to one lecturer called Knox, but anyway. Seven pound, and to, in today's money, that's around 700, right? A lot of money. They killed 16 lodgers before they were caught to sell them on for seven pound a body. Well, there was major uproar, obviously. Another demand for the law to change. A new movement um, was birthed called the Burkers. More resurrectionists willing to do body snatching. The petition still failed for a change in the law, so in a year later, 1829, it still wasn't approved to change the law. So, they killed their lodgers in a non too obvious way. Although strangulation is supposed to be quite obvious, but back then it wasn't recognised, I don't think, as easily as it would be today but they were most likely strangled or suffocated so they were in pristine shape really when they would arrive at the medical school <clears throat> so murder was never suspected so Burke and Hare were arrested and went on trial the police there was no absolutely no evidence that the bodies were murdered then and so they offered Hare immunity, complete immunity, if he gave evidence, provided evidence and told all, which he did. And Burke was then sentenced to hang in and he was hung. But the judge said to him, before giving him his um, sentence, you are going to be donated to a medical school to be dissected and your um, death mask on display and all that sort of stuff and what happened was he's now in his skeleton is in this particular medical school or museum so it is um, a bust of his death mask and his skin was used to make calling cards and books which are also on display So that's how body snatchers res or res resurrectionists came about. Like I said, a demand for the law didn't wasn't um, agreed upon even a year after, but in 1832 it was, and it meant that now bo dead bodies could be donated to medical science, which they were. But you know what, obviously anatomical science now is so well known about, well, it's actually quite hard these days to donate your body to science. I, I've already looked into it years ago. Now, they, they, don't, they just don't need them, apart from if you have a rare disease, um, if you are in the medical field, um, you know, an, an important person, 
you can donate your body. Yeah, and it, in this country at least, there has to be special circumstances for you to be able to donate your body. So um, Burke was hung and the grisly things afterwards happened. He couldn't stay in Scotland anymore because of the vigilantes. Um, so he was escorted to England and never heard from again. So. <clears throat> what did you think of that story? If you like that story, and would like to hear more, let me know. Two. Hmm. I still want more. They tried to, um, the wife was also put on trial. And although she w she was acquitted, but she wasn't deemed innocent. She, there was just there just wasn't enough evidence. She claimed to know nothing. But Hare said that she participated in at least two. Not of the deaths, I don't think. Yeah, so they've all changed. In eighteen thirty two I think the Burke and Hare murders are well known. They should be. I knew a fair bit. Just not not the details. I didn't know that. I didn't know those grisly details about his body being uh ordered by the judge to be dissected and then put on display and all that as as a deterrent. Open it. Cheers. Mm. Delicious. Yes, I do yeah. My body's special enough to be donated. Well, it wasn't back then. <laughs> I doubt it. it's even less so now. <clears throat> um. Anyone? Has anyone else tried to donate their body before? Or tried to make arrangements to do so for after they die? I think that's quite an interesting thing to do I wouldn't have thought many people have thought about it but maybe you'll surprise me so well anyway I think that's enough I'm Gucci I'm good
right well i hope you have, uh, enjoyed the story and let me know if you'd like to hear more right that's it i hope you enjoyed the look of my meal i hope you enjoyed my story please give a like if you enjoyed this video and thanks again very much for watching i'll see you next time bye